talk about simple distillation, and simple distillation is based on the vapor pressure laws. And you have Dalton's law and Rolf's law. And first, we're going to be looking at this graph right here. So in this graph, we have a pure, uh, pure water solvent, and as you can see, as the temperature increases, the vapor pressure also increases, and once it gets to a pressure of 760, your solvent is going to start boiling. Now, if we look at this graph right here, we can see a non-volatile solvent, which is sugar, in your water solution. Um, and what you can see is, as pressure um, decreases here, the boiling point increases. All right, uh, so now we're going to be talking about the simple distillation we're going to be conducting in lab today. So we're going to be doing a purification technique, which is a volatile organic liquid containing non-volatile impurities. All right, and what this is going to do is going to allow the separation from less volatile substances, and these can be uh, two liquid substances or solid reagents. Whenever you're doing a simple distillation, you want to make sure the boiling point uh, of each pure substance is greater than 40 to 50 degrees uh, Celsius. If it's less than this, you would have to do a fractional distillation. For today's experiment, we're going to be doing a dye plus cyclohexane, which has a boiling point of 80 to 81 degrees Celsius, and this is why we can do a simple distillation. This uh, cyclohexane is a very flammable liquid, and that's why uh, you can never heat a closed system or you, it would explode, right? So let's move on and look at the setup for simple distillation. So you have your heating mantle right at the bottom, and then you're going to have your round bottom where you're going to have your mixture of dye and cyclohexane. You're going to have a clamp right here. Then you're going to have your three-way adapter and your thermometer on top with your thermometer adapter. The thermometer has an immersion line right here, which you always want to be lined up with the opening of your three-way adapter right here. Okay, and then we have a condenser. And you're going to have water, cold water going in through here, and then hot water going out through here. And then we have the vacuum adapter and your receiver, where you're going to get your pure cyclohexane. The vacuum adapter, as you can see, it's open right here, and this is showing we are doing an uh, open system. All right? And whenever you're doing your simple distillation, uh, a way to regulate the heat is to make sure they have two to four drops per second of your cyclohexane, and you want to stop your simple distillation once you only have two to three mils left in your round bottom flask, which is right here. And you also want to add at least two boiling ships in your round bottom when you're doing your simple distillation. All right, so before you can start your experiment, you're going to be getting a bin from the stock room. And for this experiment, simple distillation, what's going to be in your bin is going to be a round bottom, a three-way adapter, vacuum adapter, condenser, your thermometer and thermometer adapter, the hose that you're going to use for the water going out, amber bulb, three clips, an e-flask, and a spatula. And then the reagents for this lab are going to be cyclohexane, and dye. Which is mixed solution. Which is, yeah, it's a mixed solution. You're also going to have boiling stones and grease. And right here you have also a grad cylinder that's going to be in your bin. Okay, so we're going to need 10 mils of your cyclohexane and dye solution for this experiment. And what you're going to do is you're going to pour the first about 9 mils of it into your grad cylinder. And then you're going to use a glass pipette with the amber bulb attached to it to do the last mill, just to make sure you get a precise All right. And now that we have that, we're going to take our round bottom and we're going to add two boiling stones right there. And we are going to add all 10 mils of your solution. We're going to go ahead and put your round bottom, the heating mantle, and now we're going to start setting up the apparatus for simple distillation. Okay, now we're going to start setting up your distillation apparatus. And what you need to do is grease all the joints. So right here you have your grease.
and as you can see some of these joints are frosty that means they don't have any grease you want them to be clear like this one which means you have grease what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of grease to the top of the joint and then use your glove and then you're just gonna make sure that you get grease all over the joint so and you you're rotate gonna, very gently yeah to until it's clear until like it's that clear. great now we're gonna set this down we're gonna do the same thing with this joint right here So round up two three times so that it can be grease everywhere this is a temperature thermometer head you can see right here how it went from frosty mm -hmm. to completely clear showing that we have grease all over that joint very nice all right, and now we're gonna go ahead and start setting up. So right here we have the heating mantle, and then you're gonna have your three-way adapter that's gonna be connected to your round bottom. Um, now that we have our solution in the round bottom, we can finally grease this one as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add again some grease to this joint. Yeah, here we have to make sure that grease should not go into the solution. So you always want to grease your round bottom after you have your solution and in your the round bottom. Solution should not splash too much. Great. Right. Once we have that, you always want to clamp it. That way. How we clamp this? Uh, is there are two ways: uh, a small and big one. Yes. So a small will be on the top. Big ring will be on the bottom. And now we are ready to set up. Okay, so you want to clamp uh, your three-way adapter right here on the top. Okay, and always make sure it's secure, it's not going to go anywhere. Then you're going to raise your heating mantle until it's right below your round bottom. Just like that. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in. All right. And then we're going to need a second clamp for your condenser, which is going to go right here. So we're going to have a clamp right here in the middle. You're going to do another blue clip right here and we're going to have to move this clamp a little bit and you want it to be in the middle of your condenser and again make sure it's secure all right now we are going to add the vacuum adapter and again don't forget to clamp this one as well or it's going to fall and break there you go, now it's secure. Let's go ahead and do the hose with the water going in. This is gonna be the black hose right here. And then our other hose that we had in our bins, it's gonna be for the water going out and it's gonna go right here and then in this little hole right here. All right, and we are almost ready. We just had to add, add our thermometer. We're gonna have a thermometer adapter right here. And then again, the immersion line, make sure it's at the opening of your three-way adapter. And you can see it's right there. Okay, and then once you have that, you can go ahead and turn it around. That way you can look at the temperature. 
going to use our E flask as the receiver, so we're going to have it right underneath the vacuum adapter. And now we are ready to start the simple distillation. So this is our simple distillation assembly setup. Okay, now that we're ready to start the distillation, we're going to turn on the water. And when you turn on the water, you only want to turn it a little bit. Be very gentle with it. You only need a little bit. We're going to go ahead now and turn on the temperature. I'm going to turn it up all the way to 5. And then something really important to remember when you're doing your simple distillation, you should always see drops falling from your thermometer. If you don't see any drops, that means the rate of your distillation is too high, so you need to lower the temperature. So keep an eye on the drops falling from your, from your thermometer. And then after you get your cyclohexane in your E-flask, you're going to have to clean your uh, grad cylinder so that you can measure the volume in here. So you're going to transfer your cyclohexane hexane, sorry, to your grad cylinder to get the volume. So we'll wait for some time to see if it starts boiling. It has now been about six minutes of the simple distillation and as you can see it's already boiling and the temperature is at about 75 degrees Celsius and as you can see we do have a drop right here we have drops falling from the thermometer so we know the rate of the reaction of the simple distillation is not too fast so it needs a little bit more time to get more vapors to condense here so we'll wait and Fine. you will start seeing cyclohexane in your receiver once it gets to about 80 degrees Celsius since that's the boiling point of cyclohexane. Maybe we need to uh, increase a little bit this knob up to 6. Then we'll come back. So after we increase the temperature to 6, we see it's almost at 80 degrees Celsius and we are already getting some of our cyclohexane right here in our receiver. It's a pure colorless liquid collecting drop by drop. Nice. Here we can see some vapor salt condensing. So one more thing when uh, we are doing simple distillation here you can see this is the vacuum adapter and this pipe this pipe is used for vacuum, uh, it, it creates a vacuum, so do not use this one, do not, do, do not use this, uh, do not use this uh, pipe to connect here, otherwise everything will come out, so never use this uh, vacuum pipe, never connect this vacuum pipe anywhere, this will be totally different purpose. And here your cyclohexane is distilling. Okay, so it has now been around 14 to 15 minutes. And as you can see, we only have about 2 to 3 mils left. And our temperature is above 90. So it's time to stop the simple distillation. And we're going to go ahead and turn off the temperature. And right here we have our cyclohexane and we're just gonna give it a minute or two to make sure we get any extra drops in there. And here we have a clean measuring cylinder to transfer this cyclohexane. Okay and while we wait uh, we can go ahead and turn off the water and we can reduce we can uh, reduce this uh, height as well yes. so that it sort of stop heating now you can see almost nothing is here so now we are ready to transfer our cyclohexane to our clean grad cylinder
we have to measure how many ml we got it yeah okay and then let's just get rid of those bubbles first and then what we can see is we have about 8.2 mils of the cyclohexane It's a little over. We should stop eating maybe two minutes earlier. So this is what we got of the cyclohexane and you're going to need to use this number to calculate percent recovery. Okay, so here you can see at the end you have to calculate the percentage recovery which is a 8.2 ml we have received in our receiver and we use starting from 10 ml so 8.2 ml divided by 10 ml multiplied by 100 you got around 82 uh, percent percentage recovery so it depends on the um, our experiment how much we got it so it depends on every uh, different different student different quick percentage recovery will get it we are now ready to take this apart and you're going to make sure this is room temperature you're gonna let it cool down once it is cold enough you're gonna take off the blue clip very careful when you do that and then you're gonna set this down and we're gonna clean this later we are now gonna, gonna go ahead and take off the vacuum adapter again be careful taking off the blue clips set that down then we are gonna take the condenser off the clamp you want to do this before taking off the hose and I will show you why in just a second. Okay, and now we have our three-way adapter which is still clamped so it's safe right there and we have our condenser. You still have water in there so what you want to do is remove the hose with the water going in first and then you'll see all the water is going to leave your condenser. through the water out hose and that way you don't get water all over your bench and now as you can see we are ready to take off this hose as well and we can go ahead and clean this we're going to take off the thermometer with the thermometer adapter set that down and then the three-way adapter and we are now done after Unplug that. We are now done taking it all apart. Now it's time to clean all the glassware. Now that we're ready to clean our glassware, we have right here all the glassware where we put grease on the joints. As you can see, the joints are clear and you want them to be frosty and free of grease again. The steps to do this is you're going to take your glassware to the fume hood and you're going to put some hexane on a paper towel and you're gonna clean the joint until they are frosty again and let's go ahead and show you how to do that okay the first thing you want to do when cleaning your glassware is clean the joints so as you can see i have the three-way adapter and a paper towel we're going to take the hexane put a little bit on a paper towel and then clean the joints and as you can see this is now frosty again well, this one is clear, so you can tell this one is free of grease and it's clean. And you're going to repeat that for all the joints. Here, after you record your volume, you have your cyclohexane. You're going to dump that in the organic waste. And then we have our round bottom with the boiling stones and some of your impurities left. As you can see, we have a strainer right here. We don't want to throw away those boiling stones. We're going to clean those. So you're just going to dump that in here with the boiling stones. And you're going to see the boiling stones are going to be caught in the strainer. And then there's going to be a beaker for the dirty boiling stones. So don't throw those away. Okay, so after cleaning the joints, we are now ready to clean with soap and water. For your E-flask, grad cylinder, and round bottom, since you do have some chemicals left in here even after dumping that out, what we're going to do 
is we're gonna add some DIY water first. And we're gonna do that for all of them and we are dump we're gonna dump this out in the waste before we clean with soap and water. So they all will go in the echo space? Yes, um, so since we did have cyclohexane, uh, cyclohexane in these, it can just go in the organic waste. Okay, they will go in the organic And after we do that, we are now ready to clean it with soap and water. So now that we're ready to clean with soap and water, we're just gonna add some water to it. Then we're gonna take our soap, And then we have to rinse at the end with the acetone. And we're going to use this right here. We're going to really clean it. And then you're going to rinse it three times with water just to make sure you don't have any soap left. After you do that, you are ready to dry with acetone. One quick thing I want to mention. For your condenser, you do have to clean it through these holes right here. And this one's us as well. So make sure you do both for acetone and for soap and water. Okay. So the last step of cleaning glassware is gonna be drying everything with acetone. You need to make sure everything is clean and dry before you put it in your bin. I'm gonna show you how to do that with the condenser because it's the hardest one to clean. So you're gonna put acetone through these holes right here. And then you're just gonna swirl it around, make sure you get it everywhere. And then that acetone is going to go in the organic waste. After you're done cleaning that, you still have to clean the inside part. So we're going to put some acetone through this holes right here. And you're going to repeat the same thing, just swirl it around. And then dump it again in the organic waste. And now it should just dry and it'll be fine. You can just put it back in your bin.